What's up YouTube, it's Yardy on doing that talk, so we got to another video, we got what if, what it takes to fly the 340 million C-17 Glowmaster 3 boot camp. Like, comment, subscribe, follow the links in the description, and let's get into it. These Air Force pilots are refueling their C-17 Globemaster 3 at 26,000 feet in the air. The pilots rendezvous with a KC-10 refueler jet that pumps gas down through a controlled you know, boom at 1100 gallons per minute. Nice shot, Drew. It's one of no three missions boy. we saw while embedded with a crew training to fly the C-17. At 174 feet long and 55 feet tall, this so that's like five basketball goals. How, how football field? 100, 100 feet. So that's 10 basketball goals. 1000 no, 17 basketball goals going that way. E17 has a maximum payload of around 170,000 pounds and can land on runways shorter than 3,500 feet with just three crew members manning the aircraft. We can do everything from supporting contingencies, so the war downrange. We can uh, support COVID missions has been a big thing recently. We can also do humanitarian missions, so helping uh, evac sick patients, wounded uh, soldiers. Due to its high payload capacity, C-17s were used in August 2021 to evacuate people from Afghanistan with oh, one man. plane carrying 823 passengers. Damn! The basic crew of a C-17, uh, there's three of us. There's a pilot, a co-pilot, and one loadmaster. So my role here as a C-17 loadmaster hey, is to man. load Dude. these aircraft, whether it be helicopters, tanks, Humvees, ambulatory patients. Ultimately, our mission is to support someone else. The average salary of a C-17 pilot stationed at Travis Air Force Base is around $117,000. And the typical tour is Make about three money, years. Nigga. We make earning your bachelor's Why degree Why does that is like, comment, subscribe. To subscribe to the channel, my boy. Hit the subscribe University. button. Subscribe to the channel. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, no. They ain't trying to get me copyrighted, boy. Training happens here at Travis Air Force Base in Fairfield, California, one hour northeast of San Francisco. And before pilots complete missions in the sky, they practice the complicated maneuvers in a state-of-the-art simulator. It's pretty realistic. Uh, we use it to practice emergencies that you can't practice in the jet or you wouldn't want to practice in the jet, uh, whether that's multiple engine losses or really poor weather conditions. Fire number two, engine. Confirm number two. Number two. Students train for emergencies like enemy threats and hydraulic failures. But the first scenario is a simulated engine fire. Could you please uh, scan the number two engine for us? Uh, we're showing engine fire indications. And then uh, I've got the radios, you've got the checklist. Roger. A lot of crew coordination happens at that time, so that's a good safe space uh, for young pilots to first get the feel for what the yeah. stick and power inputs feel like before you go do it in the jet. Emergency engine shutdown checklist is completed. 221, clear to land, runway 21 left. After practicing in the simulator, the crew meets in the briefing room to plan a live training mission. Uh, so training flight tomorrow, showtime is a little non-standard. We're going to do 6.30 local showtime at base ops. Pilots and crew spend hours the day before a mission discussing the route, the objectives, and backup Damn plans awesome. if anything Massive goes mission. wrong. So if we're in a failure to disconnect position, the main thing is just maintain a good stable platform, keep doing what you're doing if you're pilot flying. The crew finalized their plans and were dismissed to prepare for the flight. Think Precisely at 10 hundred, the it. crew boarded mm -hmm. the plane and ran through their final checklists. The first exercise of the so training big. mission, Get up off the ground refueling like that, in midair. So air refueling is basically thinking about a gas station in the sky. Uh, the whole concept there is we have two aircraft meeting at the same point in space. So it can be um, potentially sensitive cargo you're carrying and you don't want to stop. Um, or perhaps they're just not a good place to land. Or maybe you don't have the time to land. Do a little low. 
right You're actually where you kind of want him right now. I would, okay. I'd, I'd hold this. So we'll be about a thousand feet below see. the other aircraft. Nigga, and then eventually a little closing bit. the altitude gap the to plane, where right? their boom, uh, that's the long pole that sticks out of the aircraft to actually pass the gas from their aircraft to ours, we end up making contact with their boom. I think we got big throttle inputs yeah. in, the, in the backing up. And so you just have to, now you're going to have to work a little harder to kind of find the null again. Okay, good. Back, back. Now be patient and just see what it gives you. It does. A good saying is, uh, you know, aim small, miss small. When we're air refueling, we're focusing on very small details and trying to see like small movements. Right. Small movements that close can make a big impact. Refueling happens while pilots maneuver the C-17 at 300 miles per hour, nearly 30,000 feet in the sky. Contact. Too hot, boy. Hey. No, I land him over. For me, I was thinking about improving uh, my power movements, so. My, uh, my stick movements, so my right hand, I was sitting in the right seat, were pretty solid, but like my, my throttle movements could have been a lot better. So it's something that I can work on in the future. Break away, break away, break away. A little speed break, very nice. Nice job, dude. Phase two of the mission involves low-level flying. So low-level flying during the day, we can go as low as 300 feet above the ground, which is pretty low for a large aircraft. Um, and the intent there yeah, is to stay below sound. the radar picture of a potential adversary. So when you're lower, there's a few tactical benefits that we have that help us get to a not-so-great spot in a safer manner. All right, you want to fly a little bit, dude? That's what we need to fly what speed, right? We need to fly 290. Yeah, right, it's at 290. Out there flying it, we're, we're uh, watching our altitudes and making sure that we're clearing any obstacles or anything like that. We also had another pilot in the back uh, looking at the map from the chart, calling out different towers on each side of the route and uh, helping us avoid them and clear them that way. Pretty sweet view, huh? Oh, yeah. The C-17 headed north sweet towards view. Moses been, Lake, <laughs> Washington die, to practice landing in an assault <laughs> zone. So an assault zone is a short runway. Typically, yeah. they're about 3,500 feet. And then it has a marked zone that's 500 feet uh, long. And our goal is to put our aircraft in the 500-foot box and then use max effort to stop on the remaining uh, runway. Crews have to master landing on a traditional airstrip as well as temporary yeah. runways. So the tactical part of the C-17 is it goes yeah, to fields that uh, maybe some. have shorter runways or dirt runways, and oftentimes those are in dirt combat dirt. locations or austere fields. Pull back up on the stick and put a little bit of power in. 500 feet in front of the zone. Not sure. And full stop, everybody. Minimum. 300 feet in front of the zone with correction. Not sure. 50 feet. Plane is high up off the ground itself. The final mission, interesting, though, a I'm combat offload on back at the Travis Air Force Base. Talk, Basically what we'll be doing is simulating a, an expedited offload. Typically if we're in a um, situation in which we don't have the equipment to do a download, if we have to get in and out really quick, maybe a hostile location. Once we release the lock, we'll say brake release as well to the pilot, and then they will hit the throttle, uh, release the brakes, the and the pallet will go out of the aft into the aircraft. We'll call load clear, close up, and then we'll get out of here. Overall, it was a great sortie for everyone. It was very busy and very long, so it's always tough to go fly for put, six hours and constantly out. be engaged. Yeah. And then they just push it out. Come get y'all shit, we go. <laughs> but I think everyone performed really well. I think uh, a lot of people relate cargo jets to like an airliner. But what we do, I think, is very different. Specifically, we go anywhere and everywhere in the world. Sometimes that means you have lots of information on that airfield. Sometimes it means you have none. And so, like I said, you have to be a problem solver and really think on your toes. So it's really rewarding when you go pick up, um, you know, 150 guys who have been deployed for six months and you get to bring them home to their families. Man, shout out to the military, man. Shout out for y'all for serving our country, keeping our freedoms free. Like, comment, subscribe, follow the links in the description. I'm Yardi, I'm out. All praise to the most high.